trouble there because anyone who has not submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom that person is a helpless prey in the hand of satan no matter how sincere that individual is are we together the effect of one spirit in the life of that individual can produce catastrophe that will destroy people so it matters that when people come to church that they encounter jesus this is not an issue of an evangelist sermon or perspective the foundation for the believer's christian experience is his encounter with jesus you can encounter a man of god and that becomes profitable only if jesus is revealed through that encounter are we together now there are several people in church who are not saved they are not near the things of god and it's wonderful provided their hearts are hungry and ready transformation takes time salvation does not take time at the moment you are convicted of the spirit of god you must be able to surrender your heart until the holy spirit is at work in you the 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 negative possibilities in your life cannot be defined are we together so until we have believers who are willing or we have people i don't want to use the word congregants but it is important especially for we men and women of god in order of priority we must see to it that with every encounter there is an opportunity for people to know that the church is not just a spiritual place where christians converge it's more than that are we together the epicenter of every christian activity in church or any other place is jesus jesus first no matter how modern we become no matter how sophisticated we become and let me respectfully observe that this is the bless this is one of the um the issues with the pentecostal charismatic movement now I, i'm not i you know that i love the body of christ but i'm just addressing it because for many people they jump jesus and go straight to power miracles signs and wonders and so you find people who are fasting in church you find people who are praying in church you find people who are even speaking in tongues supposedly in church and you find out that they are around the atmosphere of charismatism but that foundational encounter with jesus is not there and sometimes because of you know they are being around spiritual things they can be appointed and they will be given spiritual responsibilities the danger is that their emphasis becomes their their experience becomes their emphasis if jesus was not the foundation of their experience jesus cannot be captured in what they are saying are we together now yes let me tell you the truth we are going to lose the potency of godliness generationally speaking if we bring jesus out take jesus out and leave power we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave wisdom we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave the bible we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave prayer we are still in trouble take jesus out and leave fasting we are in trouble the foundation for the believer's experience is jesus now there are many keys of the kingdom i hope we are learning already tonight there are many keys of the kingdom they represent the mysteries of the kingdom but there is only one key to the kingdom and that key is not a metallic object you turn left or right jesus himself the bible says there is no other there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved you will be surprised get an average believer random sample believers across several churches and ask them about jesus they will tell you about favor in an instant they will tell you about miracles in an instant and there's nothing wrong with that they will tell you about breakthrough in an instant how can i come out of this situation and say ah, i know the power of sacrifice let me see what you have sow a seed you are out but when you begin to ask them about jesus that is the reason why there are many people who can dwell 
in the midst of people who are not saved under their care for many years and they never hear about Jesus. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that the faith life was founded upon Jesus. It was not founded upon a man of God. It was not founded upon a denomination. Are we together? If people pile up in a church and they are not saved, that church is not safe. S-A-F-E. Because all kinds of trouble will emerge. You, you simply would have gathered bodies for Satan to use. There are many, respectfully speaking, there are many pastors plunging into depression today, world over, having all kinds of headaches, wondering why is there trouble every time? Trouble. I'm not, there, there are all kinds of things that come with leadership, generally. But when Jesus is not the epicenter of what you do, and when he's not enthroned in the heart of the people who listen to you, believe me, you can spend 10 years and in one day, the kind of trouble that the devil will ferment will almost break your heart and plunge you to death. Jesus, the son of the living God. So when a believer or when an individual comes, he knows that the foundation, listen, if I call anyone right now, I pick anyone and I say, tell me about your spiritual journey. You will be surprised. Our fathers and grandfathers, both physically and in the faith, there was something, you know, when we were growing up, we used to hear people say they could recite the day they were saved. Do you recall that? They can tell you I was saved on the 5th of October. This They will even recall the event. But as many people, I'm not saying, I'm not just talking about the religiosity of keeping the date. But it was such a special moment for them, they preserved it. Even after 30 years, they will tell you it was a Wednesday afternoon. They will even tell you the message they had. But you can call a gentleman right now and say, listen, you are the head of counseling and prayer. Talk to me a bit about your spiritual journey. You say, what does that mean? I was appointed. I've been around the house of God. When the church said fast, I fasted. When the church said pray, I prayed. That person does not have a foundation. It's not an insult. There is serious trouble there. Because the day he now has authority and the mandate to mature and raise other believers, he is going to teach them according to his faulty template. Are we together? Yeah. How can a father raise a responsible child to become a Christian when the father himself does not know how to be a Christian? What is he going to tell the son? You raise people to reflect your conviction and your experiences. So follow carefully what I'm teaching tonight. There are many people who have not encountered Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Now let's go to the second level. There are those who are saved. Are we together? But the opportunity has not been given to them to grow spiritually. That is another danger again. I don't mean to play with your mind. We love our nation. But how many of you know that Nigeria produces, for instance, agriculturally and then our oil and gas? But because largely we are not involved in refining, that raw product does not bless us so much. Are we together? It has to be exported, refined, and brought back. And that finished product is what you queue for. You don't queue for the dark paste of smelly, oily substance. That's not what you are packing your car for. Are we together? When you pack your car at the filling station, it is still gas, it's still your oil. But it is not the version that left the earth that you are looking for. That means there are many believers who get saved and do not submit themselves methodically to be discipled and to be mentored. The word discipleship is a word that is gradually disappearing from the church. Or unfortunately, in many platforms, what we call discipleship 
it's not maturing believers to look like Christ. It is maturing them to subscribe to the template of a denomination. And sometimes that ends up destroying people again. But according to scripture, when you encounter Jesus Christ, listen very carefully. When you encounter Jesus Christ, and that comes even by the Spirit, immediately you are introduced to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and you are introduced to the ministry of the word. These are the principal tools that are responsible for your maturity. You gain stature in the kingdom to the degree to which you subscribe to the dealings of the spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do to you? He makes you alive to Christ. That means all your organs that have been deadened by a life of sin and being alienated from Christ. There is a regeneration from the word regime. A regeneration that happens to you. Hallelujah. And now because you really cannot grow holistically in isolation. I hope you know that. God designed spiritual growth to be enhanced through community Christian living. That means it is difficult for an individual to grow holistically in isolation. Even when you read through church history, those who had their experiences alone had the side effect of a lot of imbalances because they could not see anything. They just saw a perspective and that was it. So God's authorized platform for the believer's growth is that as the believer encounters Jesus Christ, he is introduced, listen carefully, he is introduced to a, a gathering, a larger community of believers. Why is he introduced to the larger community of believers? I'll be showing you later on. But that he's now introduced to a community of believers that now begin to help him. He or she will meet people who are of like minds. Number two, it will grant the person the courage and the confidence to now begin the process of transformation. Because transformation is very powerful if it is done corporately. Are we together? So let's say for instance, from a life of sin, you now became saved. Chances are excellent that if in isolation, you will be so lonely, you will not have the courage to walk in keeping with the truths that make for your transformation. And chances are you will go back. Are we together? But when you have believers just like you, if you are the only one praying in tongues, you have no friend, you have nobody who prays with you, the day the people you left see you, they will make you feel stupid for that newfound life. And chances are excellent that you will not have the courage to walk in keeping with the things that advance you spiritually. So God surrounds you with like-minded people. Are we together? Now you begin to understand the culture of the kingdom. There are many people who are saved, but they have not submitted themselves to transformation. The Bible calls these people carnal. The word carnal is not an insult. The word carnal means that their impulses, the everything they do is governed by their senses. They are sensual in their approach. Emotional in their approach. The day they feel like hating you and getting angry, they vent it out. They are the ones who tell you things like, I'm like that. So even my mother and my father, everybody knows. I can be angry any day. You just get used to me and expect all these things. That is a carnally minded person. He is not an unbeliever, but he is one who has not submitted to the authority and the transforming power of the word. If we are together, say amen. amen. Are we together now? Unfortunately, longevity in church does not automatically bring transformation. I have drummed this again and again. Don't you make the mistake of thinking because you are 10 years old in church. 10 years old in church does not mean you are changed that far. Your change is based on your hunger. Your change is based on the quality of the spiritual vessels that feed you and guide you. I say this with all honor to the body of Christ. There are many assemblies and platforms where the members are hungry and thirsty. But the problem is the vessel and the ill-prepared meal that they continue to be served with. 
So you find people who are hungry. They love God. They want to learn. But you see, this is why God is going to judge us as preachers. Because one person mandated by God, responsible for the holistic building of another person, your personal carelessness can stunt the growth of someone for 10 years. The problem was not his hunger or her hunger. The problem is that what you are serving is absolute nonsense. Hallelujah. There are children, biologically speaking, who now they've arrived. That's the type of the new birth. But then they are malnourished, ill-nourished. When you see them, you, you can almost tell that they are sick. Their skin is not fresh. They have deficiencies of several minerals, vitamins, whatever it is. When a good doctor meets these people, the first thing is to begin to introduce them. They study what is missing in your life. Basic biology and health science will teach us that there are all kinds of sicknesses that are related to the body. And they can trace and tell you is the deficiency of vitamin C, vitamin E. Oh, your gums are bleeding. You need to take more of this and that. That's how it is spiritually. So you can look at an individual and you look at his life. Please get the message I'm teaching you now. Understand it. It will make you powerful and matured in the spirit. You can study an individual and find out that based on your spiritual diagnosis there is the absence of the prayer ministry that means whoever mentored him did not emphasize the value and the power of prayer and priesthood as a tool for transformation so the person may be sincere but all he knows is just bible study when you say pray and you stretch five minutes he's looking at you and say ah, i was not trained like this oh five minutes is enough that's my contribution to my spiritual growth because the person who mentored him did not open him up experientially to the value of prayer are we together for another his problem may be that he's not learned the power and the supremacy of the word of god so he may pray but then you find out that he does not have respect and regard for the word of god why he will tell you the person who trained me did not emphasize the word of god when he came up on stage it was just stories and stories and i laughed and at the end of it we shared the grace that means members for want of word will be a reflection of the emphasis and the level of the seriousness of the spiritual leaders that train and build them do you agree with that when believers are not matured to be carnally minded the bible says is death is that in your bible it says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace how does a person metamorphose from being a natural man to a carnal man then to a spiritual man there are various stages the natural man is one who has not even met christ the carnal one is the one who has met christ but the workings of the spirit and the workings of the word has not yet found expression you see the difference now so the natural person that one he just needs jesus he needs to go to the cross there are many many carnal people in church unfortunately many of them because of the longevity of their stay have been appointed leadership positions and you will find out you know a carnal man by his perpetual disrespect for the supremacy of the word of god and the ministry of the holy spirit these are the two indices that define true spirituality or otherwise i know you are carnal or spiritual to the degree to which i see your submission level to the word of god so you can be in the office for instance and you are a relative christian what did i call you uh, we were traveling and i was shown a very interesting video that i laughed they told somebody to choose i think a million dollars or the presence of god and he said no he's not worthy for that presence he is is the the money that when i saw that i said that's right 
gave her a silly excuse i'm not worthy for the presence no are we together the cure for carnality is not counseling no the cure for carnality is not even deliverance like laying on of hands to cast out demons the cure for counseling is that the cure for carnality is an immersion into a system that brings you under the authority the governing authority of the holy spirit and the word of god and let me tell you it takes a long time for that transition to happen anybody who tells you that he got born again i hope you know there is nothing called the gift of maturity all these believers who evolve out of nowhere and claim maturity no sir maturity even physically madam if you give birth to your child today and by the next day he's coming with a cup of water to give you will you drink it what is wrong with bringing a cup of water you are saying that child i gave birth to the child i've not even recovered myself and the child said good morning ma fluent english and he's giving you a cup of water no i mean there are natural things that don't make sense how do god can give you speed don't get me wrong god can give you speed but believe me there is no such thing as instant maturity god himself subscribed the path of maturity to process you know why so that you can build a pattern around it to help others to mature there are many when someone tells you i am a matured christian you don't need to argue what are the indices how do i know you are a matured christian i've been in church for a long time i handled bible study last year not necessarily those are not indices for maturity listen it is my prayer and i pray that god will open your eyes to see the burden in my heart my desire for you is to be so thoroughly sound and furnished not unto pride are you together now so that we you can do much for the kingdom just walk with me there's something i want to show you tonight many believers are not efficient tools as far as the revelation of jesus and the advancement of the kingdom is concerned because they are largely ill prepared if you are a battle axe and you are blunt you have not been trained you will only be a casualty if taken to battle is that true transformation discipleship is a word that many people hate and then there are others who say i want to grow at my pace i will feed myself and learn whatever i need to learn you see as a student respectfully speaking it is irresponsible to choose what you want to listen to is that true when a student gains admission you go and sit down in class trusting the teacher and trusting the system if the teacher fails you then the government that is responsible will punish the teacher but you don't get to the class there are many many courses in in our, our institutions of learning many students will call certain courses boring is that true and there are certain courses you call exciting there are certain courses that are maybe three four five credit unit and there are others that are just one credit unit that means the emphasis is not the same depending on what you are going to become there are times you sit down and you almost want to cry when will this course finish but you will sit down there but when we come to church most times we the bible calls it itching ears what is this one that is teaching on on character or this now we've not had the message of favor in a long time is it that this man is not aware of what is happening in nigeria you sit down why don't you trust verify whether the teacher hears god verify whether the teacher loves you if so sit quietly and learn in the school of ministry we have several courses and finance is the last of them and usually you will understand when we start the course finance because there are many people if the first course is finance as soon as we are done you will graduate by yourself and say that's it may god bless you i think god has met my area of need <laughs> let me tell you why many believers don't grow properly we run around from pillar to post 
looking for what we want to hear what not what we need to hear are we together Pastor, can you teach about wickedness? Why? Because you have a personal problem with somebody politically. We convert your problem into a message. Are we together? No. You don't come as a ministry. Listen, you must be disciplined even as a man of God. I'm saying this to ministers of the gospel. If a church is looking for money, that does not mean you change the curriculum and then this, remember the Holy Spirit is called the Lord of hosts. He is the one who designs the growth pattern of the people. Are we together? You don't just come and preach your need and say, I think something is wrong. We are going to emphasize this issue of money and giving for the next eight weeks. I'm not being sarcastic. It's important for you to understand that the believers need to grow holistically. It's been my emphasis that if your growth does not capture everything meant for your holistic development. Let me tell you this. When Satan comes to attack you, he does not just attack you. He studies how the pattern of training that you have been submitted to. If Satan finds out that in your training... Prayer was the emphasized. He will route through that area. If Satan finds out that prayer was exaggerated as against the word of God, he will route through that. If he finds out that the place of character was not taught you, he will route through it. If he finds out that success, influence, and other kingdom teachings were not captured in your experience, he will leave you to keep practicing priesthood while he destroys you using the tools of need. Satan does not just attack like that. So he comes to find a family that loves God sincerely, consecration, hunger, but they do not know anything about the economic system of the kingdom. He will fashion his, he will want to attack their prayer life. But he will not attack the prayer life by attacking prayer directly. He will use the area of ignorance to so distract them. To a point that the next time the man of the house says, Alright, everybody, let's come for prayer. The wife will turn and say, I don't know who this your God is. But I'm tired of this thing. And by the time the wife frowns at her husband, he will go back and say, God, you had her. Me too, I'm tired. It's just I didn't say my own. <laughs> Are we together? Imagine a doctor that never went to anatomy class. Imagine a doctor that never went through surgery teachings. And then you find yourself in a hospital and he says, I want to help you. You will not even pay. Come and lie down. Come and do what? You just lie down. And he carries an injection like a knife wanting to stab you. Who taught him that strategy? The quality of believers that we are producing because of the kinds of things that we are teaching. Are we together? It is important to touch the various areas and the various aspects of the, the, the kingdom life. But... We must never de-emphasize or overemphasize the truths of the kingdom. Now, I, I submit to you that it is a very difficult thing. Difficult because every one of us is already given a dimension to function. And the dimension you are given will usually be your emphasis. That is where the need for the other dimensions of the body comes in. God does not give you the labor to learn everything by yourself. You can outsource the dimensions you do not have through humility and meekness. That means God is training me in the prophetic. So my own assignment will be consecration, fasting, and prayer. I will not have the time to go and learn under you know, a business school or learn under a financial mentor. 
and God will save me that burden because there is somebody doing the work for me but I must honor the person to say listen while I was fasting and praying and rolling on the ground for one week God was dealing with you too I am not better than you simply because my training looks more spiritual I now submit to what you are doing please help those under the anointing one lecture from this guy who has spent five years learning the principles of the kingdom will now empower me in addition to what i have and then the guy too there is the side effect because for focusing learning about the economic system of the world as against his spiritual life he must balance it too and if he ignores me he will be wealthy but one attack on his life because he does not understand priesthood he can't defend himself one wrong investment motivated by the spirit of poverty can bring that man down are we together I'm coming back to this point let's go to the third level the third level and, I, and I, this is where I want you to pay attention to the third level is where believers are thoroughly trained and thoroughly mentored but they are not connected to purpose let me tell you there is a danger for any assembly when you keep pumping anointing in people revelation revelation and the people don't know what to do with it the body of christ is in trouble for this one is why many many men of god keep having headache when you get young people a young man a young lady you are teaching them about finances teaching them about prayer and fasting do you not know that knowledge has an implication the goal of all that investment is that there must be an opportunity for them to deploy by the time a man is fasting 100 days yet there is nothing for him to do in church are we together praying the kind of power that guy has one day he's going to say listen I, I don't know what to do with all this fire locked up in my bones that's why you can give him opening prayer of two minutes and he will turn it into prophecy for one hour it's not that he's bad the fire is too much and you have not told him what to do with it and there is no opportunity to deploy it every time you begin to teach people right and to mentor them there must be in your training the systems of deploying it this is true for ministry but this is also true for government if you keep training young people you are having graduates coming graduates coming and there's no platform to be able to help them let me tell you something somebody is going to come into their life and say listen don't mind this person you can start your own church if god is calling you that's fine but if god is not calling you that that becomes the advice or you can start your own business or you can do whatever it is let me tell you it's a risk to enlighten people and leave them without purpose are we together so i'm praying every day with you i'm fasting every day with you you've now graduated from the school of ministry impartation every service you are falling down and standing up revelation after revelation a day will come knowledge is what will frustrate you not ignorance you will find yourself overdoing things and you'll be angry because the goal is to have expression something within you keeps crying for expression are we together that's the reason why a man who keeps teaching his child say how to drive help them please you are teaching someone how to drive his car you're teaching him how to do something and you leave him there the gentleman can drive and yet there's no car to drive one day what do you think is going to happen talk to me you did it so you know one day when he's not around you say listen uh, this this fire is 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 this this thing i need to drive God never designed people to remain members forever. Listen, listen, just listen, just listen. When I say not to be members, listen, people don't have to be around you to be with you. Are we together now? Hmm. 
that means if God is training you and one day God gives you a job with African Union or UN you have become an extension of what we represent are, are we together the joy is to see that now the value for you ah i prophesied oh this thing i just said this is a prophetic word in the name of jesus christ please sit down this is the aspect that is missing in church and i say this respectfully speaking there is quality training quality mentorship training but there are no platforms so you find out leaders who should be changing society are dying with church fanatism nothing for them you see people who should change there are people who qualify to be governors leaders but they are not aspiring because they have not been taught that purpose is also spiritual moses whereas you should be helping israel joseph you should be bringing solutions to the economic problems of israel whereas you are there quietly with a small life this is what this is why we are not able to translate our christian experience to a context that transforms society it is the reason why when you say you are a christian especially in africa most times they just look at you as if you are just a fanatic with no value to society is someone learning let me tell you this i have said it and i will say it again preaching on the platform is not the only thing to do with the anointing preaching on the platform is not the only thing to do with revelation if we don't mentor the younger generation properly there will be trouble because when these guys are accessing light it's important for them to know that the seven mountains are also platforms of ministry so that the person who now is routing the part of politics and the one who is staying to become a national prophet they are doing the same thing in the realm of the spirit you cannot say the one who is at the altar is higher than the one who is in government no no without esther the jews would die are we together it took joseph manning the helm of affairs to preserve the purposes of god Africa needs to understand the apostolic structure for kingdom advance. I can tell you we have not yet captured that blueprint holistically. That's why I took the time, respectfully speaking, to honor his majesty. Because of these kinds of apostolic understanding. You imagine now, respectfully speaking, the kind of approach of leadership and governance to his territory. Africa I'm a man of prayer I'm a man of fasting and I'm a man of the word but I'm a man of the whole counsel of God there are many young people right now who are not supposed to be on the pulpit they are being on the pulpit is causing trouble to them and to others they, they are not finding definition but the mentorship structure they have received has said once you are spiritual find a way of coming to stand here and they stand here yet they know joseph the, the, the throne is calling you daniel the place of governance is calling you esther you are fasting but realize that you are being called to the palace there will always be people like anna the prophetess their ministry stops at the temple they never go out of the temple if you take them out of the temple to be involved in secular things you have destroyed them they were called to stay they will stay and wait and jesus will still come to the temple and meet them this has been my concern by the privilege of god's grace i have studied many revivals i have studied a bit of the history of the church in nigeria i can tell you not to this is not the platform to start discussing it but some of the major moves of god in nigeria let me tell you this what killed them 
was a the emphasis of certain things there were those who came emphasizing the prophetic consecration prayer and then they didn't place emphasis on doctrine there are those who came i don't want to mention names respectfully speaking and the emphasis was just on doctrine and teaching and they de-emphasized the prophetic and prayer and both moves suffered by the time nigeria has only preachers i promise you that we are in trouble we did a bad job if a man of god produces only preachers then we're in trouble because one policy from our parliament can stop the purposes of god are we together i believe in influence i believe in the whole counsel of god men of fire but people who are sheep among wolves having the intelligence of the kingdom and even the wisdom of egypt listen i have studied territorial transformation by the grace of god and i can tell you the truth when jesus walked upon the earth we need to study the ministry of jesus i can list for you all the people groups that jesus influenced jesus did not do crusades alone read your bible there were times he was with tax he he the same passion he took to preach in one crusade was the same passion he took to go to the house of an influential tax collector what was the result many people were set free because the man was a corrupt man look at jesus one moment he's talking to thousands of people the next moment he's alone with the woman at the well with the same passion the next moment he's investing time casting out one demon because that one man set free was equal to 10 cities hallelujah please look at me i can tell you this and i say it with every sense of humility it is the turn of africa to blaze the fire of revival we have prophesied this and many who have gone before us have said this for many years that there are certain nations that have been uniquely singled out by the election of grace one of them chiefest among them is nigeria now with all due respect and honor to every nation i am telling you this prophetically and that by the spirit however rather than just rejoicing and jumping and saying we are the ones pioneering revival we need to go and study the revivals that have happened and why they died are we together now yes where i come from there is a wise saying that when you see your neighbor's bed on fire don't just watch and laugh look for water quickly because that same fire is coming to you too look for water and start soaking your own beard too Europe has had its chance of revival. The US has had its chance, the word of faith and all these ones. But let me tell you, as we prepare for the return of Christ, whether we like it or not, this mantle for global missions, this mantle has right now is in Africa. It's not a lie. It's not help those under the anointing. It's not a lie respectfully speaking once upon a time now i say this with every sense of respect many nigerians fly out with joy and say they are going for a lecture or conference somewhere but right now the whole nation and the entire globe they continue to come to this candlestick that has now been lit but my listen my 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 charge tonight is a prophetic warning because while we rejoice thinking we are getting it there are things we are missing too we are already beginning to follow the same pattern that aborted the revivals past do you know why rather than staying with the holy spirit to understand the structure and the formation of the move of god in a way that it lasts listen do you know when god comes his emphasis is not to produce preachers alone his emphasis is to produce witnesses 
and ambassadors please hear me body of christ god is not in the business of raising preachers alone preachers alone will not get the job done they never got the job done in the bible alone read the bible and see all those who walk wealthy people walked those in government walked joseph's walked esther's walked elijah walked you can't teach elijah about finances that's none of his business he's a radical prophet however you can't come and put esther down and joseph down and throw away economics some of you right now are about to lose your mantle and your call because you are following a template if i'm spiritual i must be this no no there is a formation and there is a distribution of training patterns we must have the intelligence listen men of god we must be matured enough to know what training pattern is allocated for what formation you don't train a theater art student in an anatomy lab it doesn't work that way there are courses called general courses that everybody would do education secular enlightenment gives us that knowledge there are many josephs who have been trained to become elijah they are going to fail there are many esthers who have been trained to become elijah and there are many josephs elijahs who are becoming esthers there are people who have no business with the palace their assignment is at the altar they should be mastering the art of the key is to recognize your place and appreciate other dimensions are we together for as long as this revival produces only preachers i repeat we are in trouble no the revival must produce men of hunger don't get me wrong the revival must produce men of fire that intrinsically god is not looking for preachers god is looking for witnesses if the geography of your witness is the altar then so be it stay there and fan the flames but don't stop joseph from getting to the palace because you don't need to be there your assignment may not need the palace but if joseph never gets to the palace if esther never sits down with ahasuerus there are jews that will die now please look up can i tell you this whether you are joseph or elijah or daniel or anna the prophetess the word of god prayer the spirit of god these are general causes no matter where you are going to whether you are getting to the palace it will still be by the spirit by the word are we together there are many people claiming they are prayer warriors and the grace that follows a prayer warrior is not there because their assignment is that of a daniel and every time they want to go like daniel they are surrounded by elijah's so they feel guilty for being daniels and they are giving up the elijah mantle the daniel mantle to remain elijah if you are not elijah leave that place and find where daniel is pray in the spirit for one minute my heart is boiling with a good matter to give us structured intelligence on how to maximize the revival that is upon africa right now because we are making a costly mistake and by love the holy spirit is pointing us and helping us to have understanding hallelujah now watch this by the time we go to hebrews 11 
the bible does not dichotomize them when we get to hebrews 11 both the daniels the elijahs the esthers were given one word elders the bible says they obtain all of them the ones who preached the ones who man government for jesus the ones who preserve the economy they said all of them were called elders I like this part of the song. We'll raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. We'll raise your banner high. down i read my bible well and the bible says he gave unto some he gave unto some apostles he gave unto some prophets he gave unto some evangelists some pastors you went to school if they say he gave some that means there are others what did he give the rest because the same lord is rich unto all we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you i raise your banner high i shine your light so Please look up. If Mary was mentored by Anna the prophetess, she would have missed Jesus. Because Anna the prophetess would keep her in the temple. And as wonderful as she is, Anna the prophetess would not be able to teach her so much about marriage. Yet marriage was the area of her call. That was the area that would bet Jesus. Her assignment was to be chaste enough until Jesus arrives through her. Joseph of Arimathea was not a prayer warrior. But without Joseph of Arimathea, he used his influence as a man of means to secure the grave where Jesus was put in. Without Joseph of Arimathea, the word, oh grave, where is your sting, will not come to place. The body of Jesus was hanging on that cross. Prayer and fasting had finished his ministry. It took influence to bring that body from the cross please hear me nigeria we need to redefine by the spirit the apostolic formation for a revival that lasts we have laughed at others who went before us some of us were arrogant enough to even be sarcastic towards them now the mantle has come upon us we should not fail a generation through pride we need to sit down and learn the patterns of the kingdom Africa does not need preachers alone. I repeat. Terrorists know this. Do you know not everybody who is a terrorist is kidnapping? There are those who are financiers. There are those who are the priests and the mediums. You hardly see them outside. But they are the ones who power those ones who go and fight. They understand the formation. Hear me. There are some of you. Based on your call and assignment, you are not only going to fast and pray for 40 days, the rest of your life will be in that consecration because you have the assignment of a watcher. You have the assignment of a watcher. You will be given the burden of nations. 
you will be given the burden of territories you will pray down revival upon people but my caution for you is while you pray down revival don't teach that watchers are the only people needed in that formation no I repeat again Moses Aaron did not need to learn the wisdom of Egypt but Moses needed to learn the wisdom of Egypt please hear me if you are Naomi and you are Ruth pay attention to your marriage that is where the mantle is if you are esther pay attention to your rising and influence because your assignment is in the palace if you are daniel make sure you keep having an excellent spirit get the phd become a professor don't let anyone tell you you cannot rise because you will need to sit on the board of companies and corporations and stand in for jesus now hear me Please look up. Please look up. Sit down. Sit down if you can. Goodness. Do you know why I'm sharing this with you? I have been having a lot of prophetic encounters in recent times. And I've been picking the burden of the spirit. The spirit of God is saying something is wrong. We are veering off. We are doing it religiously and even with pride, but we are veering off. If there is no restructuring of the divine pattern, why do you think the Bible captured all these people? If the Bible wanted to teach you only one thing, one person was enough. There are 66 books full of different scenarios coordinated together to produce the same thing. In our midst here, there are judges and justices. When we are praying in tongues, they pray too. In our midst here, there are senators, honorable members, house members. When we are praying in tongues, they pray too. Because that is general cause. When we are fasting, remember there are courses in the university. It doesn't matter whether you are studying mathematics, medical science, architecture. When it's time for that course, everybody comes. That course is prayer. That course is fasting. That course is doctrine, learning the word of God. But as far as the jurisdiction of your witness is concerned, I repeat, if you are Mary, go and read about Mary. If you are Elijah, do you know what mentorship should produce? Mentorship should help you to start finding a figure in the Bible that looks like your future. If at the end of training you in church, three years, five years, you have not found your parallel in scripture, then you are not mentored properly. If the only person you see through your mentorship platform is Elijah, you did not see well. Because Elijah is not the only one in the Bible. The assignment of mentorship is to open you up to the various dimensions of the kingdom personified by the individuals written there so that by the guidance of the spirit, you will start finding the blueprint that reflects where you are going to. Look out to Abraham, your father and to sarah that body i called you and blessed him so if god has told you you're going to become a kingdom billionaire don't feel less relevant just because you may not have the grace to fast for 100 days you are not less spiritual you are the one who will make the prayer warrior remain by supporting him so fire on with your learning of economic principles There is a lot of ignorance mixed with pride in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves. We are not the first to carry this baton. But we must carry it and run with it with honor. Looking unto Jesus, not unto ourselves. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Please hear me, Koinonia. The day I failed to show you this, I have failed in my assignment. If we assess Koinonia right now, and the only thing we can say of Koinonia is that it is a place of where preachers are trained. That may be wonderful if that is my assignment. 
provided I acknowledge that there are other dimensions I don't have, then that is fine. But where I tell you a preacher is all you need to be, I deceived you. Where I tell you a businessman is all you need to be, no. That's why I don't run away from politicians. No, I don't. I don't run away from business people. You will find me in their midst and I'm talking because the pattern that Jesus left us was territorial influence, training and representing the purposes of God. Let me tell you this, when you study church history, you will read where the church started making a mistake. And I will tell you where that came from. When Emperor Nero, Emperor Nero was one of the, the vicious emperors that persecuted the church historically speaking, right? At that time, if you were born again, you would not even last up to 72 hours. So other aspects of the kingdom were not the interests of people. It was just to stay, martyrdom was all that they looked at. Now, when Emperor Constantine came and the war that was fought with the sign of the cross and he brought victory by reason of the dream and the vision he had, he now allowed the worship of God freely. The believers who were now saved because all those who mentored them had died. They didn't know what to do with their remaining lives now that they were not martyred again. So he started bringing all kinds of versions of imbalances. A few people among them said, listen, we can't sit here and die like this. We have children, we have needs, and they broke out. And when you read the church, it was one move. Every move you call from the Protestants, the Puritans, it was a, a detection of imbalance in another move. Let us be careful so that we don't clap for ourselves too early. Our children will edit our scripts. Our assignment is not to do everything, but our assignment is not to stop what God is doing because of our biases and our prejudices. I truly believe with all my heart that God allowed his majesty to come and a judges and people scattered here to be able to teach you something about this message. Remember what I have said. When it is the ministry of prayer, if you say you are a businessman, you spoke nonsense. Because a businessman is first a priest before a king. Are we together? When it has to do with the worship of the king, all of us bow. Even Nebuchadnezzar was smarter, he knew. He said, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, I don't care who you are, bow to that image. The highest royalty I cast my crown before the highest royalty. So there is a meeting point where businessmen, apostles, prophets, teachers, are we together? Professors, presidents, governments, heads of corporations, billionaires in all kinds of currency. There is a central point of convergence that is before the king. When we come before the king, you don't come as a professor. <clears throat> That's why you take your golden crown. Your crown, your crown defines your jurisdiction of dominion. You take it because it does not matter again. When you are before the king, you cannot be a king. <clears throat> are we together? So you are a king in the judiciary. You are a king in business. You are a king even in the practice of priesthood. But when we stand before him, I don't want to know who you are again. There is only one that commands our attention. So we cast our crowns before... Hold on. Your first assignment is to have a crown. Your real worship is not your falling down. Your real worship is that your crown worships first. So by the time you stand before him without a crown, he says, what happened? I said you are kings. Where is the crown for being an influential person in the judiciary? There's nothing to cast. Esther, where is your crown? The anointing didn't come for you to heal the sick. It came to take you to the palace. Esther, you, there is a roll call of worship in heaven. I do not see the crown of Esther. 
So when we stand to worship him, Elijah stands with his prophetic crown. Daniel stands with his governmental crown. Joseph stands with his economic crown. Are we together? Ruth, Naomi, all of them. And together, we cast our crowns before. Now you understand the song. The highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. He's the King of kings and lords. Of lords, you are the King of kings. Listen, you understand the song now? When you are getting your crown, it is because one day you will cast it before him. So when you stand before him, you will say, I am a professor. Lord, I did well. I stood to represent your purposes in the educational sector, but I am still a priest. So as Elijah kneels down, the professor kneels too. The doctor kneels too. I have become a consultant surgeon. Through my expertise, I have set up hospitals today. And by the privilege of God's grace, I have advanced the purposes of the kingdom. Oh king, here is my report. The king bows to the king of kings. That's what Daniel saw. Daniel did not see weak men. Read the vision of Daniel. Daniel saw kings bowing to the king. I look forward to the time in Africa when presidents will take their crown on behalf of their nations and kneel down and say this is to you the king of the ages not from a standpoint of fanatism let me tell you this your worship is not complete if your crown is not on the ground your worship is not complete if you failed in your assignment to discover the place of your crown no if you are a man of god your assignment is to wait upon god in fasting prayer consecration to build the kind of power now god will grant you access to the minds of people and you guide and mentor them when i worship the lord i cast my crown ministerial crown that is my jurisdiction i cast it with honor if africa has only business people we're in trouble joseph alone cannot do the job daniel alone cannot do the job if there are only elijah's and jeremiah's we're in trouble in fact if jesus does not have a treasurer and finances a man who is only having an assignment for three years yet he had regard for finances please hear me the revival's past failed because the individuals who became the frontliner of that revival they were unilateral in their thinking and they did not capture the other dimensions you will read about the revival's past and you will hear that when other people rose with other dimensions the ones who were currently on fought them because they said i it is only the pattern given to me and it's a mistake that is repeating itself again in africa you see the spirit of the apostolic and the prophetic empowers you to read the writings on the wall so that you can guide god's people holistically when we challenge the body to be united we are not saying we should be uniform no uniformity is not unity unity is a sense of appreciation that esther plus elijah plus jeremiah plus abraham plus moses are we together plus joseph plus Mary, plus Joseph of Arimathea, in fact, plus David, it is all of them together that equal Jesus. So if your theology says Elijah equal to Jesus, it is wrong. Elijah equal to a dimension of Jesus, you are right. If your theology says Joseph equal Jesus, you are wrong. Every one of them were manifesting dimensions that were holistically captured in Jesus. 
you're a man of God here, we need to trust God for grace to return back and check our mentorship structure. But I can tell you, the fire of a revival is brewing. I have said this for many years. I have seen it many times in my visions and it is consistent with God's end time prophetic blueprint for the nation. There are many young people who are rising but the only ones who are celebrating right now are preachers. That means it will make other people who are not in the preaching dimension to feel that they are not part of it. Now, the same way there are young men and women rising apostolically and prophetically in Nigeria, you will start seeing a parallel in the business line. You write it down. You will see young men who will arise people who will be summoned by the economic powers of the land to vet them and say by what technology are you accessing the riches of the earth and they will be as spiritual and you are going to see people who will rise up supposedly from nowhere are we together now and elections in their various places there are various regions, world level, they will win it with a landslide victory to the point that you will say, but it looks like we are rewriting politics because the hand of God is the one behind what we are seeing. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. wrapping up let me teach you something when I began my training with God by reason of my background and at that time it was a moment where God was beginning to do great things and to build people as it is with God when he starts out with people it was just fasting prayer consecration the word are we together visions of revival but when i had the vision that represented my mandate it confused me for many years because in that vision i saw a generation of people i've shared it with you many times you've heard it that it was a generation of people and they were crying and in that vision i came i was upstairs a building hiding from people who were maybe wanted to enjoy me or something like that and when I looked at the people, those in front were zoomed to me. And they said, I asked them what is wrong. And I remember them saying, no food and no water. And I said, ah, ah, no food and no water. How does that relate to spirituality? And then I said, who is the cause? And they pointed to me. I said, me, I can't be that wicked to do this to you. And then I said, okay, I'm coming to help you. Where would I get the food and water? I opened that door and it was not a chef I saw. When I opened that door to go out, I said, if I perish, I perish. I saw an old, bearded, gray-headed man. Now I know he's the Holy Spirit. And he held my tiny hands to go and serve food and water. Do you need a chef or you need an old man? hear me there are some of you today by reason of this teaching if you want to be effective go back to school while we are praying be praying too but go back and get your PhD and your professorship because your assignment it may not be for everybody but for you there is a place you have left where destiny has been crying. Who should occupy this position? You are here joining us in prayer. We don't need to have a PhD. We don't need to be professors. We have found solace in priesthood. But we'll be wicked to tell you don't do yours. Esther, don't look for a man of God alone. Look for Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins. He is the authorized mentor to train you. 
if it's a hazardous that you want to sit near it will take more than Mordecai is there as a man of God but in addition to Mordecai look for Hegai he's the one who trains the keepers the women who are with the king no matter how Mordecai loves you he cannot give you the training of royalty because Mordecai sits at the gate he's an intercessor he's the one who will caution you but he's not the one who will make you queen Ruth if you want to leave your assignment obtain grace from God and don't run away from Naomi when you see her because if you run away from Naomi looking for Elijah you will never see Boaz the things that are written are for time they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope Elijah if you know you are called to be a prophet you better look for Elijah even when Daniel calls you don't go your destiny is with Elijah don't make the mistake of leaving Elijah to be trained by Daniel Daniel cannot make Elisha to carry the double portion of Elijah's mantle is someone learning dear businessman do not think less of your passion to have financial resources for kingdom advance provided your heart is right and it's not a search for mundane carnal acquisition of things but hear me i give you a precaution and i give you a warning every time the king calls whether you are elijah whether you are daniel whether you are anna the prophetess the position is to take off your crown from everywhere whether you are in government house in the research institute you are here standing like me preaching or you are someone leading a leadership institute you are a justice or you are whoever the moment there is the clarion call of the king together they teach us in social studies um, government nationalism and all kinds of courses that anywhere you are when you hear the national anthem of your nation what did they teach that you do that you stand where you are because the moment the national anthem comes you are no longer a professor you are no longer a banker you are no longer a doctor you are the citizen of that nation when you see an american person or a british i can't remember which of the nation we traveled to and i was on my way returning i think that was last year and then i noticed everybody was standing at the airport i said what's happening they said they're about to sing the national anthem i said oh wow i'm not a nationality of that nation but i had to stand to respect their honor so when the master says believers fast he didn't tell men of god he told all of us when he says believers seek my face he's not speaking to a man of god are we together one thing that happened to everybody was that it was their relationship with god that caused them to excel ruth if you leave god boaz will look at you like a village girl who needs help and never be able to marry you elijah if you leave god you will be one of those prophets maybe a false one joseph if you leave god you will remain in prison there even if you come out of prison you will go back home not the throne the factor that does not change is jesus christ and his purposes this is sound doctrine this is discipleship that turns members to ambassadors let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen god is tired of church members i don't say that to mean membership is wrong you understand the context god is tired of membership who are like sheep respectfully speaking without direction and anything the ma there are many believers who are confused in their spiritual adventure the reason why many people are living the faith life is because there is no excitement and purpose connected to it now when you come for koinonia every week as i am teaching you there is purpose connected to what i'm telling you 
when I teach you on finances, I will teach with the same passion as when I'm teaching on fasting and prayer because in my economy, there is no difference. Provided it is a tool that reveals Jesus, I will teach it with the same passion. There are some of you here, when we are talking of prayer and fasting, you listen. When we are talking of revival, you are happy. But when we are talking of influence, principles of territorial, you know, kingdom advancement, you just shut down and say, Kai, this is not what I want to hear. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. You must embrace the whole counsel of God. There is the area of emphasis. Forever, I'm a man of God. That is my assignment. If you see me talk among business people, it's an elective. If you see me talk among politicians and the rest, my core assignment is here. Ah, and I'll be a true soldier. I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my post. We spend ourselves and wear ourselves because we have come to find out that he is more than life. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, 6, 6.30, I'm out of this city again. Preaching for Baba Wale Oke in Ibadan. By night, I'm on my way to Lagos, returning back, then Cote d'Ivoire. Why am I doing this? It's more than fame. If it's fame, writing a book is cheaper than stretching yourself. Please look at me. I want you to look up to us as we follow Jesus sincerely. But as you look up to us, you better be honest to find out whether if you are Esther, thank God for Mordecai, but please find a guy if you are Elisha even if you find Moses look for Elijah is someone hearing what I'm saying yes. there are business people who are being mentored by prophets you will be a prayer warrior not an economic giant respect the prayer warrior but find a sound financial mentor with a kingdom dimension who will teach you the economic system of the cosmos while you honor the prophet you are truly trained by the one who helps you become are we together there are people here by reason of your assignment god is subjecting you to high level influence and exposure i'm not teaching you dishonor the truth is that sometimes we men of god by reason of our assignment god may not have to expose us that much but your own assignment requires that you understand the ethics of royalty you understand the ethics of culture and how to navigate yourself if you are mentored only by the man of god teaching you on stage you will fail when you stand before kings in addition to what mordecai does it is Hegai who will teach you what the king wants and Hegai said let me teach you something he told her something Mordecai never told her. He said, when it has to do with Ahasuerus, I have worked with him. I know what he wants. Take this oil. Let me teach you what the king wants. Rub this oil for one year. When Daniel went to Babylon, it was not Bible study they were teaching them there. They taught them the way of the Babylonians. Is it in your Bible? The anointing he had from priesthood empowered him to be ten times better. But what exalted him was his ability to solve real life problems this is what the spirit of god has been telling me i have a responsibility to contribute my own quota with love no sense of self-righteousness or justification to charge the body of christ pastors men of god we need to trust god for grace to unashamedly begin to embrace an authentic apostolic and prophetic structure that will host the revival coming and to preserve it for generations unborn may god forbid that if christ tarries and we no longer are here somebody will be teaching one day and say see where apostle got it wrong he taught you to just pray and fast but he taught you to reject influence so esther did not go to the palace 
and Haman's plot found its way. It is amazing that when God wanted to deal with Haman, it was not Hagar he called. He called Esther. There are many dimensions of the victory of Christ that is not men of God who will produce. There is a dimension of wickedness. Look up please. As anointed as we are, men of God, has this solved Boko Haram problem? Please talk to me. Are we not praying? Are we not fasting? Has it solved the problem of terrorists and bandits and the rest? We continue to pray. But it will take more than that. That should be a lesson to us. As far as prayer is concerned, as far as fasting is concerned, as far as communicating sound doctrine is concerned. But when we have a judge who is anointed, are we together? By the time there is a case somewhere and there is a threat against the program of God because that person has had the legal qualification plus the anointing that has come from the man of God. Now you can defend not only the purposes of, of, of Christians but the purposes of, of a civil life, a life of excellence and dignity. A man of God can be anointed to go for a crusade. But one airline that will face financial bankruptcy can stop the person. That's it. A man of God can be anointed to go somewhere. But a poor image of a nation can make the person to be thrown back from that nation, return back to your country. We need to understand the holistic implication of this. You can be anointed without a passport and a visa. You will not travel to go and preach anywhere. And if the person... Who is responsible for the passport and the visa is under the influence of a demon spirit. Your ministry will die a natural death. Are we together? No matter how anointed you are as a man of God, is it not the givings of God's people that will help you build the house for God? If the people are not empowered and then you now ask them to give, it's fraud. Hallelujah. going to pray worshipers arise businessmen arise apostles arise prophets arise captains of industry arise territorial mentors capacity builders arise Royalties arise. Footballers arise. Athletes arise. Music ministers arise. Doctors arise for God's sake. Tech giants arise. Manufacturers arise, producers beyond oil arise. That is the name, and that is the formation of the army that will return Christ. When it is time to fast, everyone fast like you are a man of God. When it is time to pray, pray like the only thing in your destiny is. The prophetic but when it's time to go through that distribution the geography of your witness take back your crown put it on your head and stand like the champion that you are we will not call you a prayer warrior when we see you on TV we will call you the consultant surgeon the one recognized by United Nations but when you come to my office and I meet you after we talk about UN, we talk about Jesus. And then we pray. And I will impart more grace upon you. And you will return back, not as a religious fanatic, with a greater sense of intelligence. This is the vision, even behind the school of ministry. The school of ministry does not raise men of God alone. The school of ministry will raise men that will be used by God. 
in every strata of human activities. I made up my mind that as far as I'm concerned, I will never raise a people by the grace of God who are only spiritually vibrant. When you sit in the midst of politicians, know that it is ministry I'm doing there. And I don't have to be mentioning Jesus. I can help and we'll talk and say, okay, why don't we do this this way, this way? If I am confused, I know what to do. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. We have an advantage. Are we together? If you have headache, pray and fast. If it remains, go and look for a doctor. Doctor, you are anointed. Don't die the death of a fool because of pride. Meet a doctor who will just give you a prescription. When you are healthy, you can now keep serving God while you are growing. There are many people who are so fanatical about their positions. A simple drug that would have solved their problem. They would rather stay and say, no, I know, I am this. The word is working for me. I'm not a fanatic. Listen, listen, let me tell you. I believe in the power of God's word. You know it with all my trips and schedules. If I'm lying about this thing, you will know. Believe me, I say it without pride. There are many people, if you do one tenth of what I'm doing, you collapse in one week. I leave this place now, maybe around one, two. And by 5.30, I'm on my way to the airport, preaching two sessions for Baba Wale. Okay, I return back, have a meeting. And the next thing, I'm in Abidjan, preaching every day until Saturday. And we are already preparing for all of this. There are things you cannot fake. If it's not at work in you, it will show. However, however, I am not stupid. There are doctors here who have given me intelligent medical recommendations and I embraced it with wisdom. Are we together? Guide me on the kind of food to eat. There are some of you, by this service, from here, go to a chemist before you go home because you are not feeling fine. Don't die the death of a fool. I'm sorry, I'm talking, this, this is, I, I hope, I'm not, forgive me, eh? please. There are some of you here, the only thing in your world is money. Repent. Come and meet us. Let us balance the other side because this, your pursuing money is leading you to trouble. You need to come and even take a maybe a three weeks break no talk of money so that you fan your flames again that's why god kept us here but there are some of you god brought you to stay one month and be on fire and then go back and continue but you have built a camp here you are not elisha go back are we together kingdom financiers we will need you when all the projects begin so while we pray for you keep learning the wisdom of Egypt and when God empowers you don't use the gold in Egypt to build an idol in the wilderness keep it it is for the tabernacle not for the idol <laughs> Joseph even though Pharaoh will promote you, you will marry the daughter of, per, of Potiphera, the priest of On. They will change your name. Do not forget that even though you are carrying an Egyptian name, you are a covenant child. Never forget. Daniel, you will sit in the midst of a parliament where almost nobody loves the Lord. Never forget that it was your prayer that preserved you so while you provide national solutions every time you stop and you're hooked somewhere look beyond the intellectual realm go back the secret is still being revealed the holy spirit is still alive hallelujah worship us please keep writing the songs because there are still moabites who will try to walk against judah and there are times our swords will not be able to fight. Make sure when we need to win by worship, the songs should be ready. Are we together? Joseph of Arimathea, keep doing your real estate. 
that grave you bought will preserve something one day the man who owns a donkey that you have not been told to ride don't feel bad it is Jesus who will ride on the donkey so take care of the donkey like Mary took care of Jesus go to the street that divides and you will see a coat that no man has ridden on lose it and if they ask you say the master has need of it there are people who will set up billion businesses and yet one naira from it will not be for them that is a cold that you yourself the owner is not allowed to enjoy because every time the master asks for it there is a crusade that needs 10 million instead of fasting and praying for money you fast and pray and say lord bring people because one kingdom financier says consider it done this talk of money that has mad the integrity of the church we have to kick that thing out there are intelligent people who are accessing the wisdom of the spirit plus the anointing that comes from the holy spirit through priesthood can have what it takes to command the wealth of nations believe me i it is an insult to redemption to call for a prayer and fasting for weeks and the only thing is oh god visit us we need financial resources now there are better things when you fast and pray for a soul there are many things we are fasting and praying for that is unnecessary money can solve it you know i'm not lying oh god this rent and god says my dear daughter remember you rolled on the ground and told me i can use you there is a man of god somewhere who is about to lose the faith for the sake of the one thousand people there go and build him a house by the time you go there and say sir here is a key the key to this house the lord asked me to build it the question is among two of you who is a witness both of you if we say clap for who is walking most people will clap for the man of god and forget that the man of god would have plunged to depression and died and one thousand members would have gotten into i was going to travel to kenya and my passport was in another embassy i was almost going to miss that conference can you imagine hallelujah and thank god for people here one to one to contacting people at the highest level and they pulled out my passport and i was able to get there that nation was blessed not because a man was anointed alone but somebody else was doing his job somewhere too are we together I may be as anointed as you say and consider but I'm not the, the pilot who flies myself tomorrow by the grace of God people will be blessed and healed and delivered all through this week but how about the pilot who flies the plane how about the person who cooks to eat if you hear that I died for hunger is that is that a wise reason to die I wasn't Mataya though just hunger are we together we're, we're about to pray what of the cloth I'm wearing as anointed as I am you bring me a needle and thread or you bring a what they call that thing the sewing machine I will stand and look at it like they, they looked at the writing on the wall now as I'm speaking to you right now there are professional kingdom minded tailors around this nation and around the world sewing my clothes so that I will look smart make no mistake to think they are not in ministry no. are we together as we are here right now there are security people everywhere making sure there is maximum security within this location all kinds of an intelligent you know sometimes when i see the security architecture that they design i'm very very humble at the intelligence at the highest level the purpose of the training you are receiving here is because the gates of your assignment as far as its contribution to kingdom come is concerned is crying out for you for some of you you have remained in the temple for long the temple can become an idol more than the temple what you need is jesus if your assignment is to go out there david 
if you are praying when Goliath is roaring, Israel will die. Pray when you finish. Carry your weapons of war. Your destiny is to be a warrior that will later become a king. Anna the prophetess, if you leave the temple because you think you need money and you go and start being mentored by Joseph of Arimathea, Jesus will not be able to come because the, your, the intercessory ministry will be corrupted. By this teaching tonight, I brought three things to you. Number one, that there needs to be a rearrangement of our understanding as far as God's prophetic program and the revival coming is concerned. That it is not only the spiritual aspect or the aspect of we men of God that is needed in this revival. And that we men of God alongside the entire body must embrace the diversity of the operation of the spirit that will synergize itself together to capture the move of God. We will need money. We will need people of influence to defend our interests. We will need military people to protect us while we take the risk with our lives. We will need those who feed us, those who dress us. We will need those who protect the policies that keep the purposes of God. Then we will need those on fire who will walk in signs and wonders, lifting people from wheelchairs and crutches. We will need people who teach and mentor and guide people. We will need evangelists who will preach like never before. That holistic description is the army God is looking for. Please rise up on your feet. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. God is raising man of fire in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till my life looks like him. God is raising man of power in this place. God is raising man of influence in this place. God is raising signs and wonders in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till we look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop. Two prayer points for this service and we're done prayer point number one father show me from scripture an individual whose destiny represents where you are taking me to go ahead and pray go ahead and pray find yourself in the scripture the bible says he found where it was written concerning him please pray and obtain grace from god Reveal to me by the power of your word where it has been written concerning me that lo, I come in the volume of the book. Elijah, find yourself in scripture. Sarah, find yourself in scripture. Joseph, find yourself in scripture. Paul, the writer of two thirds of the New Testament, find yourself in scripture. Peter, the chiefest of the apostles, find yourself in scripture. Agabus, find yourself in scripture. Abraham, find yourself in scripture. There is nothing God wants you to become that you will not find a parallel of it in scripture. You will not go wrong when the word of God is guiding you. Please pray. Reveal the blueprint of my destiny by your word. My contribution to this revival that Africa and even Nigeria is privileged to host. In the name of Jesus. Final prayer point. Father, grant me the grace to honor and to appreciate the diversities of assignments within the body of Christ. Go ahead and pray the grace man of god don't look down on business people
business people don't look down on preachers entrepreneurs don't look down on leaders all together we represent parts and pieces of that glorious army wealthy people don't look down on intercessors and they who are pegged at the altar carrying the burden of nations and praying for them father grant me the grace to stay in my place of assignment but to have that understanding and that appreciation for the diverse provisions that are resident within the body in the name of jesus in the name of jesus the time has come by the privilege of god's grace where an anointed man of god can stand here a businessman can stand here a politician kingdom-minded politician can stand here royalty like his majesty can stand here a justice head of a, a you know the judiciary can stand here and all of us together can hold hands and believe we are doing the same thing for as long as preachers keep being exalted more than other people the people will leave their assignments to be preachers so that they can get the clap too when you clap for joshua selman clap for the kingdom minded justice clap for the businessman who in spite of the financial storm is still becoming a billionaire because the resources is what will keep joshua selman focused also clap for mama who is not educated but is raising five godly daughters are we together now oh yes don't clap for joshua selman and don't clap for mama those five daughters are the ones in the welfare department of his church and they are not stealing because mama trained them well the gentlemen who walk morning to night there was a father somewhere who did not pray in tongues but was sincere enough to raise them as responsible people threw away carelessness from their life now today they are the ones who are your heads of department and pastors don't clap and take glory for yourself let baba receive the share of his glory for disciplining and training those children can i tell you many people have taken away headache from us as men of god because they helped us now you don't have to suspect people and say you're a treasurer do you steal or you don't steal because somebody has trained them for you if you clap for joshua selman alone and demean and downplay other people simply because of the charismatism of ministry i'm not saying should not honor priesthood has its dimension of honor and i understand and whenever you do it and people do it across the globe i receive it with every sense of honor but i'm telling you this when i see people who have dimensions i do not have for instance when i meet with businessmen most times as they are greeting me ah my apostle i'm greeting them too god bless you sir and if i have the privilege of learning anything quickly i will not learn as apostle i will learn as a student by a king in an industry are we together when i have the opportunity to see an elderly person and i will greet her mama how are you oh man of god no mommy i'm a man of god but i'm your son too and she says really where i stop may you continue it's not a preacher that speaks that kind of blessing for you <clears throat> now you understand why we honor people in this house including our children you see those little children come and run we don't know you don't know how many trees can come out of a fruit you can guess how many fruits can come out from a tree these children you see as small as they are for some of them as soon as we share the grace that's when koinonia starts for them that jumping you see it is better for them to jump in the house of god some of you at their age you were still idol worshipers i'm not being sarcastic for these people to be praying in tongues while you are praying in tongues too 
what do you think they will become when they are your age the next time you see a little child or a little baby don't push them trying to see apostle we are both apostles it's only that one is manifesting earlier while the other is using my life to correct and work with greater accuracy are we together there are many people here who are younger ministers some of them come to me and you see me greet them and hug them some of them come and they want to lie down I said don't do that you can respect me but don't do that don't if there is anything we have is the privilege to have seen higher you may still be in your formative stage but we will pat you at the back when you make mistakes as much as God has shown us we will correct you but we will help you because the little boy you see in a manger is the one who will save the earth after 30 years is someone learning you need to go back after this service madam go and meet your husband and say thank you i thought you were a stupid man but now i know you're a man of god too forgive me for that ignorance there are some of you who will never cook a nice meal respectfully speaking for your husband but if you hear that i'm coming to your house you will even kill a cow for only me to eat it no it's not necessary it's not necessary that man god gave you is the one who gave the house that we can even come with honor parents don't look at this your children and while you are talking with joshua selman on phone and saying yes sir those little children they are the ones who will protect you in old age little children don't misbehave because you are learning nonsense from the internet are we together yes there are people at 11 they were already responsible on their own so please parents haven't encouraged you don't over pamper your children until they become a disaster to society if that stubborn child becomes a choir director he will do everything he did to his siblings in the choir you will add headache to the church politicians we love you we keep praying that you love this country above corruption and love this country above sentiment we will keep praying where God grants us the grace, we will talk to you. And to those of you who have brought yourselves under our leadership, we will, be, we will not be afraid to draw your ears in love and say, do it this way. But the body of Christ in Nigeria, the body of Christ in Africa, I have good news for you. We will win. It's been written. Forget what is happening in the church. One problem here, one, forget it. I am telling you, it has been written this revival you see will not be aborted in the name of jesus we will not win because we are sufficient we will win because the captain has risen and has stood before us and as we follow him even as we blow the trumpet in zion and sound the alarm upon his holy mountain we will see the move of the spirit in africa like never before in the name of Jesus father tonight we have heard your word you have charged our hearts and helped us to see the value of submitting ourselves to the word to growth to the house of God to methodical and structural mentorship Lord I thank you for the blessings of these precious people you have given me in this place and global thank you for the gift of the body of christ thank you for all other men of god you have planted in this nation that continue to help us to see where we don't see clearly thank you for the diversities of the gifts thank you for the businessmen thank you for the politicians thank you for the judges thank you for the members of parliament thank you for the royalties thank you for the entrepreneurs thank you for the parents thank you for our force father we pray that you give us as a nation as regions as individuals a healthy orientation and an appreciation for the diversity of what you are doing in this body but lord we declare for revival we declare maranatha let it come for signs and wonders we declare let it come for breakthroughs and lifting we declare let it come for good and righteous governance we declare let it come for prosperity and increase we declare let it come
for an end to terrorism occultism and oppression we declare maranatha and father we pray that when you are assessing africa and nigeria let it be by the privilege of god's grace that we did not miss out as we return oh god i pray that will return with stronger convictions making quality decisions that will help to reveal and glorify jesus for in the mighty and matchless name of jesus we pray give jesus a big hand clap god bless you hallelujah you want to make jesus lord of your life this moment haven't heard me speak you are saying apostle i know that i need jesus listen to me remember the one you bow to is the giver of the crown in the first place and if he does not empower you you cannot be able to live for him i told you there is one thing that is common between the businessman the man of god the captain of industry jesus for someone you came here to church and while i was speaking the lord was speaking to you and telling you now let's minimize movement now is the time i want you to leave your seat right now as i count five i want you to come and stand before jesus you are making a fresh decision you are rededicating your life come come there is a preacher in you you don't have to kneel please stand i have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you may lead me i will go god bless you keep coming appreciate them as they come the shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead i will follow and i have made a choice that i will listen for your voice wherever you may be i will go come if you're coming please hurry up i pledge allegiance to the land with all my heart with all i am i will see to honor his command i pledge allegiance to the land brothers and sisters thank you for making this decision and for those who are joining us by way of the internet, you're joining us by way of television or the rebroadcast. The Lord speaking to you. It is a new season and he's calling you to a life of total surrender. He wants to make meaning out of your life, to bring beauty and glory out of your life. As I lead these precious ones to pray, may I request that you also join in the prayer to the end that ye be saved please those of you who are in front and all the overflows may i request that you lift your right hand high above your head to heaven as a sign of surrender just your right hand is fine say this after me lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you you have brought these ones to yourself i declare that based on the integrity of your word their sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus i call you the righteousness of god in christ 
I declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of God and that you obtain the grace to stay and to remain in the faith. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life and I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Congratulations for making this decision. May I please request that you move to my right. Be very careful with the crane. There are counselors waving the placard. Let's celebrate them as they go. Thank you. Thank you. It's a new beginning for you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, just, just to add one or two announcements. Thank you for your patience. We're announcing that the public relations department, the public relations department, they are responsible for correspondences, um, is open here in Abuja now. It's opened for new members all those who desire to be part of our pr department all interested persons can send their applications by email to pr koinonia pr koinonia as one word at gmail.com to indicate your interest address the letter to the head of department public relations the closing date i have here is sunday the 10th of september sunday the 10th is it saturday or so but the 10th of september that should be a saturday so please you are interested you can find out more information at the pr desk immediately after the grace hallelujah one more time we honor and appreciate his majesty the olu of worry and her majesty thank you so much sir we truly honor you and we appreciate you and for everyone who has come our international guests we bless and we love you and we honor you one day we'll have the time to ask all our international guests to come here and we'll pray for them probably by the next miracle service hallelujah rise up on your feet thank you so very very much may the lord bless you in the name of jesus this week beginning let it be a week of blessings for you you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places and i declare that you have a goodly heritage the hand of the lord is strong upon you you are effective in the area of your kingdom service and the contribution that your life should make as far as this global missions and revival is concerned you will make effectively may the lord bless you every point of need whatever it is that is an issue of need in your life i declare in jesus name that you receive it as an answer right now the lord bless you in jesus name i pray let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you and see you next week I come before my Lord and King, the one who gave his life for me. I'll raise the banner of his name until the nation world. The champion of the host of and captain of my destiny. Yeah.